Sure. Yeah, we're ready. Good morning, distinguished guests, clergymen, and honored guests. My name is Chaplain Lieutenant Colonel Lonnie Wortham, and I will be your event lead at today's Faith Leaders United Against COVID-19 event. Your willingness to come today and receive the vaccine provides meaningful encouragement to the community at large and will play a vital role in fighting the spread of COVID-19. We cannot express how much we value your contribution to this effort and your participation in this event today is greatly appreciated. Thank you so much for coming out on this beautiful morning during this busy season of Holy Days across many faiths to join us in our collective effort to support our communities and the great state of Maryland. Let us start with a prayer. Gracious God, we humble ourselves under your mighty hand and we thank you for your faithfulness and we thank you for your many blessings. We do not deserve all of your goodness and all of your kindness, but we are so grateful and thankful. We appreciate your call to the faith community to come together and to stand shoulder to shoulder, speaking well of one another, but also encouraging people to get vaccinated. We ask that you would bless our time, that you would be present as we put our hope and our trust in you. In your holy name we pray, amen. Up next is a man who needs no introduction. He has led our state through these trying times. So please give a warm welcome to our governor, Governor Hogan. Well, good morning, everybody. Uh, it's really great to be here with all of you. The sun is shining here on M&T Stadium. What a great day for a vaccine. Well, thank you all very much for joining us today. Um, I want to particularly uh, thank my partner in government who had a lot to do with this, Lieutenant Governor Boyd Rutherford, along with uh, Brigadier General Janine Burkhead, who has done a wonderful job as the head of our Maryland Vaccine Equity Task Force and her entire team. I want to thank our Health Secretary, Dennis Schrader, who's been a great leader throughout this crisis. But I especially want to welcome and thank all of the faith leaders who are joining us here today. Thank you for leading by example by getting your vaccine here today and for joining with us in our campaign to get more Marylanders vaccinated. The Biden administration has uh, recently recognized Maryland's vaccine equity plan as one of the most advanced in the country. And at the core of that effort has been engaging with our trusted community leaders to stand up vaccination clinics in underserved and hard to reach areas and informing people about the safety and effectiveness of these vaccines. This morning, we have gathered together at a place that in many ways embodies uh, what we have been through over this past year. This stadium, which was normally packed with 70,000 cheering fans, was converted over the course of just a few weeks this winter into a mass vaccination site that recently surpassed the milestone of more than 100,000 vaccines given. Last year, when we first began to take unprecedented actions to bring our entire public health arsenal to bear against this invisible enemy, none of us could have fathomed the toll that this global pandemic would take on our lives and on our very way of life. But Marylanders rose to meet this crisis with great courage and resolve. And together we summoned every ounce of strength and every resource at our disposal to defeat this threat. We stood up field hospitals and expanded our surge capacity by 6,000 beds. We procured gowns and masks and other PPE, built a testing infrastructure from scratch, which has now completed over 9 million coronavirus tests. We deployed thousands of contact tracers statewide. And now we have successfully administered more than 3 million vaccines into the arms of Marylanders, including our most vulnerable citizens.
there truly is a light at the end of this very long tunnel. But we're not out of the woods quite yet. As of today, any and all Marylanders 16 years of age and older are able to get a vaccine at any of our state mass vaccination sites. And by next Monday, April 12th, all providers statewide, all 3,000 points of distribution, will be required to allow vaccines for all Marylanders age 16 and older. Getting more people vaccinated as quickly as we possibly can is our absolute best defense against these variants, and it's the best way for us to win this war against this deadly virus so that we can once again fill M&T Stadium with cheering fans. Equally as important as getting a vaccine yourself is helping someone you know to get a vaccine. So I want to particularly thank all of our faith leaders, all of you who are joining us here today for the critically important role that each of you are playing in helping us accomplish this life-saving mission. So thank you very much. With that, I'm going to turn it over to my partner in government, who's done an incredible job on us, this whole effort. Please welcome Lieutenant Governor Boyd Rutherford. Thank you, Governor, Brigadier General, Secretary Schrader, and of course, our 50-plus faith leaders who have joined us today here at M&T Stadium. You know, the faith-based and community-based organizations have been instrumental in our fight against the coronavirus pandemic. And expanding the reach of the state's vaccination efforts to do so. You have been on the front lines of this pandemic and seeing firsthand how COVID-19 has devastated our families and communities. Some of you have shared your firsthand experience, experiences watching loved ones battle the virus or battling the virus yourselves. You have also consoled others and have been there to comfort others when they have lost someone to COVID-19. You understand how important it is to get people vaccinated. People trust places of worship as places where they can exercise their faith and even connect to the care they need to protect their physical, emotional, and spiritual well-being. I have worked closely with many of you and called on you as trusted voices to encourage more people to get vaccines because you are uniquely positioned as members of the faith community to connect with folks on a personal level and reach individuals in a way that government officials cannot. This is especially important for populations who have been traditionally underserved and hard to reach and those who may not have the ability to get to a mass vaccination site or clinic or retail pharmacy. And so I want to say thanks to the faith community. Maryland is a leader in developing these partnerships between the state, our health care systems, and places of worship. And as the governor mentioned, this leadership has not gone unnoticed by the Biden administration. On Saturday, I joined the City of Praise Family of Ministries down in Prince George's County to tour their new community COVID-19 testing site that was launched in partnership with our State Department of Health, the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, as well as the church. And in their renovated former academy, it was redesigned to be a large testing facility when Six Flags became a vaccine site, a mass vaccine site. This partnership now provides testing, but it is also part of the first in the nation program to provide monoclonal antibody infusion treatments, which is a one-time treatment which has shown to lessen COVID symptoms and is 70% effective in preventing hospitalizations and death. Those of you assembled here today have advocated for taking action on behalf of the communities that you serve. 
and your willingness to talk about the pandemic's impact, advocate on behalf of our communities, and open doors to become vaccination sites has made a difference in overcoming mistrust and information and spreading hope that this pandemic will be over very soon. This past Sunday, there were several churches who were able to celebrate Easter in person with physical distancing and mask wearing during the services. I am sure that many congregations were grateful to be able to come together in one place. We're not out of the woods yet. And as, as now every Marylander is eligible to receive COVID vaccines, it is still important that we continue to use every tool at our disposal to end this pandemic for good. Those who are already part of this network already, I wanna say thank you for doing what you can for the people that you're called to serve and continue to spread the word with regard to vaccinations for more folks and as well as to get other religious leaders involved. If you're not connected with us, we need you. You know, and take the time today to learn how you can become more involved in this process. We need you to connect with our Vaccine Equity Task Force and continue to spread the word about the good that can be done in our communities when we form new and strengthen existing partnerships. I'd like to now turn it over to Brigadier General Janine Perkett. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. So, um, you know, teams all over the country are taking the field for fun and games and activities and events. However, here in Maryland today, we are taking the field to recognize the importance of getting the COVID vaccine shot. We're here for fellowships, relationships, and community, and that's what's important. It's a time for reflection, a time for renewal, and a time for hope. This assembly of a diverse clergy and faith-based community leaders are integral to our success, from education to shots in arms. Looking over the past year, we faced a global pandemic. The Small But Mighty Vaccine Equity Task Force fanned out across the state with a mission of putting shots in arms in location and communities all across the state. And today, I have to tell you that we've increased shots in 50% of those communities where we've been working. This wouldn't have happened without the faith-based community, and I want to thank you for that. This is a testament to community, to collaboration, and to determination. I can't say enough how much I appreciate you and all the local stakeholders for reaching out to the Vaccine Equity Task Force and assisting us in breaking down those barriers that keep people from getting the vaccine. The Vaccine Equity Task Force will continue to work with partners, as we remain unyielding in fighting the coronavirus. Again, I would like to thank our partners and the community and faith-based organizations like you for working with us as we strive for community immunity. And thank you for coming out to our faith-based leaders event. As more vaccine becomes available and phases are now open, encourage your congregations to make an appointment or to walk up. Thanks to the governor. If you have any questions or assistance, the packet you received today has our number and our contact information. Don't forget, 1-855-MD-GOVAX works just as well. Equity Matters, thank you very much. Good morning, um, Dennis Schrader, the Secretary of Health. Governor, thank you so much for your leadership, Lieutenant Governor and General Burkhead, my partner who's done a remarkable job. Uh, I can't tell you how much I appreciate what she's done. Uh, the light we're seeing at the end of the tunnel is because of the governor's guidance and leadership and pushing to get us uh, through this, uh, this nightmare. And I also want to thank each of the faith-based leaders, you, uh, many of uh, I've, who I've spoken to, and we greatly appreciate all you're doing. Uh, every day I talk about the critical importance of vaccinating Marylanders 
as quickly and equitably as possible. Uh, essential to meeting this goal is working with partners like you uh, who can reach vulnerable, underserved, minority, and senior communities here in Baltimore City, in Baltimore County, and across the state. For those of you who are with us today are already vaccinated, I thank you uh, for being an example to your congregation, followers, and the communities you serve. For those of you who are with us today who have not been vaccinated, I encourage you to get the first vaccination available to you. Uh, as the governor said, uh, starting today, every uh, one 16 years and older is eligible to get vaccinated at one of our mass vac sites. By next Monday, April 12th, all Marylanders 16 and older will be eligible for vaccination through all providers across the state. Getting a vaccine is as easy as going to church or a mosque or praying. If you're willing, the reward is immeasurable. Please help us get this message into your communities. Again, vaccinating vulnerable, underserved minority and Maryland seniors and ensuring that they have access to vaccines, testing and other services has and remains top priorities of mine and the governor's. The governor, Lieutenant Governor General Burkhead and I stand ready to work with you in any way needed to ensure that we do not leave anyone behind in our efforts to vaccinate every Marylander. Thank you. Governor Hogan, Lieutenant Governor Rutherford, thank you for your leadership, your words of encouragement to the faith community. Thank you for standing shoulder to shoulder with us as we try to support our communities and the communities around us. Also special thanks to Brigadier General Burkhead, the commander of the Maryland Army National Guard, but head of the task force. Ma'am, thank you for your leadership and all that you're doing. And uh, as we take a moment to close out our event, I'm going to invite Imam Khan down and also Rabbi Drucker. Will you please come down and offer a benediction? I greet you with a universal salutation of Muslim by saying the Arabic language, Assalamu alaikum, may the peace and blessings of God be upon you. Absolute praise you to Allah, the Lord of Abraham and Moses and Jesus and Muhammad on whom be peace. The supreme ruler of the universe, we believe in him and glorify his name and seek his aid in all affairs of our life. We beseech his protection from committing sins and we ask for his pardon and his mercy. Almighty God, the God of Abraham and Moses and Jesus once again, and who goes by many names and yet is beyond all names, we thank you for the gift of your divinity found in the midst of our diversity. We thank you for being made in, our Im in your image, being sisters and brothers of one human family and able to pray as one in the spirit of love. We give thanks for a shared commitment to diversity and collaboration across faiths, cultures, and gender. And we give thanks for a commitment to leadership that empowers others in positive ways. And we give thanks for a commitment to communities that work for the good and well-being of society. We who are bound in the sacred trust to maintain unity and solidarity and encourage our people in their quest for truth and reconciliation, justice, and love readily acknowledge our need for prayer. We come therefore seeking the wisdom and courage to lead in terms that provide the successful elimination of the pandemic that is plaguing our country, state, and nation. We offer gratitude for the individuals in this room who live and lead with integrity, courage, discipline, and humility as they find solutions to heal our concerns and pain. We pray that we in this room with in all aspects, respects, be models of good works, and that in our teachings we may show integrity, dignity, and speech that cannot be condemned. Remember our loved ones who have passed away 
due to the pandemic, and we pray for their souls. May the Almighty God bestow his mercy and forgiveness on all of them. Though we profess different faiths, we discern together that your compassion is for all and your love unites us in service to one another. We pray that together in the confidence that you are with us and we ask your holy blessings as we pursue our work on behalf of those in need. Amen. Amen. Hello. With gratitude and thanksgiving to the heavenly healer, we hold deep appreciation and thanks for inspiring the medical teams and scientists, granting them the wisdom, the knowledge and expertise to prepare these vaccines for all of us. May all those who participate in the creating, delivering, and administering of the vaccines be blessed. God, grant healing to us, to our loved ones, to our community, to our country who is in need of healing, and to our world, and to each person who is in need. May it be your will that with these vaccinations we will have the ability to keep humankind safe. As the Talmud teaches in the Tractate of Sanhedrin, whoever saves a single life saves an entire world. Blessed are you, Holy One, healer of all flesh, sustaining our bodies in wondrous ways. It is fitting that we gather to mark this sacred moment only days after the end of the Passover festival where Jewish communities across the world celebrated resilience, renewal, hope, and freedom. The exact themes that all of us need to inspire and guide us as we move forward into this next season of hope together. May God bless you and keep you. May God cause the divine light to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May God turn toward you and grant you peace. Amen. Thank you, Imam Khan and Rabbi Drucker. This now concludes our event. For those of you that are getting vaccinations, we have escorts and we're going to get instruction. So please stand fast for the instructions. Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. My name is Technical Sergeant Steve Conkey with the Maryland Air National Guard. I'd like to follow up and once again just welcome you all to this facility. Um, our goal here at this facility is to vaccinate as many people as we possibly can. So with that being said, I do believe I have a couple of patients here in the audience. Uh, so if you wouldn't mind, if you have a registered appointment today, please stand up, if you wouldn't mind. I'll have you look to your rear. There's going to be a soldier with a flag. If you wouldn't mind slowly making your way to that soldier with the flag. Once again, this is for those of you with appointments scheduled today. If the rest of you wouldn't mind just standing fast at your current position.